Hey friends, today we'll use the wall to work on a cannonball handstand, also known as a tuck handstand, pike handstand, and an L-shaped handstand. You don't need to have any experience, you don't need any props, except the use of a wall. We'll start out working on our cannonball or tuck handstand. So it's very similar to this child's pose shape, where I'm gonna connect my thighs and my chest, and I reach my arms forward and push forward so my shoulders come way up on my ears. We want to maintain this compression, so we'll use the wall to do it. For the video, I'm going to use this bookshelf, but I would use a wall for sure. So, I'll set up with my feet touching the wall and my hands under my shoulders. And that's important so that I can create that compression in my thighs and my chest. So I'll hover my knees off the ground and push my butt back into this downward puppy shape so that my thighs touch my chest. Maintaining that compression, I'll take one foot to the wall, push into the wall, to lift the other foot off the wall, and then push into my hands. And I'm just gonna stay right here and hold it. And you might even stay for a total of 10 breaths, gripping into your fingers, pushing into your index knuckles, getting your shoulders to come way up by your ears. Since we're not worried about balance yet, we'll just look at the wall. And once you've had a few breaths there, we'll go ahead and come down, one foot to the floor, and then the second foot to the floor. So, if that's all you feel comfortable with, which can be harder than it might seem, then you might try that again and hold for 10 breaths. Otherwise, we'll work on hopping cannonball. And I wanna to try to maintain my thighs and my chest touching. So I'll show you in the middle of the room. If I connect my thighs and my chest and I hop upright and I keep that compression, chances are I'm just gonna land on my feet. Now if I hop up and I open up, then I'm gonna to need to be prepared to exit which we're not working in this video. And that's why you might consider hopping towards a wall, and it's always best to see how much momentum you actually need. So for this, I'll set up my hands about eight inches away from the wall. Again, I would use a wall, I'm not a bookshelf, but for the video, I'm going to do this. I'm gonna start out in that downward puppy shape, right? So like child's pose, connecting my thighs and my chest, and then I'm gonna get my shoulders right on top of my wrists, pushing my fingers, Hop up, heels to my butt. Maybe my goal is just to get my feet to the wall, right? And you can see how I open up, but that might be what you're working on. But I want to try to keep my thighs and my chest touching. So let's try it together, and we'll give it a total of 10 hops. So when you're ready, thighs touch the chest, get your shoulders on top of your wrist, grip into the fingers, hop up, heels to the butt for 10. Nine, try not to hesitate. Eight, you can always just hold it. Seven, six, Five, four, try to land as softly as possible. Three, two, and one. Come down. Give your wrists a little bit of love. Roll them out. Always good to start out by warming up the wrists, which we did in the last video, which was handstand push-ups and planks. If you haven't checked that out, but I'm just trying to keep this short and sweet. The next shape of work is a pike shape. So Pike is a lot like staff pose, dandasana. So I'll extend my legs out, and then I'm gonna reach up and push. But the thing with the pike shape is I'm gonna have this anterior pelvic tilt. And so often when we think about touching our toes, instead I wanna focus on my pelvis, sticking my butt back, maintaining that push up, slight pulling of the ribs, gripping of the fingers. So you could even just choose to work this shape by focusing on your pelvis in this staff shape or we'll try it at the wall. So for the wall, it's going to be the same setup that we just did with our feet touching the wall and our hands under our shoulders. Grip into the fingers, push in, tuck the toes, hover the knees, create the compression of the thighs touching the chest. I'll just take my foot up to the height of my hip, push to get the other foot to lift, keep the compression of your thighs and your chest, and then press your butt over your shoulders. And I'm actually gonna still think about keeping the compression so I'll come up onto just the tips of the toes. I'm not worried about balance, so I'll look at the wall. And we'll just try to hold this for about 10 breaths. And if you can't get the other foot off the wall, think about transferring the weight out of the leg that you're trying to lift and getting the weight into your hands, right? That's the idea of standing on your hands. We have to take all of the weight out of our legs. And when you're ready, we'll go ahead and come down. Roll out your wrists a little bit, reverse your hands, 
Could be a little bit of a chicken action, pressing the back stands into the ribs. And we'll try 10 total hops towards a pike shake. And this can be a really challenging shape. So for this, I'm again going to position myself about a foot away or less than a foot. Bend my knees, create this downward puppy, almost child's pose shape. Hop up, think about taking your butt all the way back to the wall, all right? So we'll try it together, or you can do exactly what we just did, but we'll go for 10 hops. For 10, and of course you can hold it. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. You can tell that the natural tendency when your hips stack over your shoulders is for your legs to go up. So you really have to focus on pulling your legs down towards your chest. We're going to do a couple more, but before we do, we'll do these little leg lifts. So I'll come back to this staff shape, create a hollow body shape, round it through the upper back. Right leg lifts, and then the left leg, and then we'll try both legs. So it's that same idea of I'm actively pulling my thighs into my chest to create the shape. So let's try 10 more pike hops, or you could go back to using the wall and try it like that once again. But when you're ready, shoulders on top of the wrists, push back, lean forward, bend into the knees, heels up towards the sky. Think about taking your hips over your shoulders for 10. Thighs to the chest, nine, actively pulling your legs down. Seven, six, you can always just hold five, four, three, two, and one. Let's slowly come down. Give your wrists a little bit of love. Take a couple moments. Pike can be a really hard shape and so can cannonball. That's why I always like to teach a variety of shapes because some shapes are gonna be easier for some people and other shapes are gonna be easier for other people. The next shape that will work is an L shape. So, for an L shape, we'll measure the distance, one leg length. So, I'm going to take one foot to the wall, and where my toes are, that's where my fingers are going to go. And I like to shorten the distance. A lot of times, the tendency is to hop from way back here and kind of rev your engine to get all the way up there. But if you shorten the distance, it's going to be a lot easier. And I want to show you because I've measured my distance. If I hop up, I'm compressing the thigh to the chest with respect to the leg that I'm hopping off of. So I pull this leg down as I reach this leg back. And I'm able to work this almost pendulum here to try to find the balance, okay? Before we go into the hop, just wanted to incorporate both of those concepts. We'll try it at the wall, making that L shape. So I'll start with my feet touching the wall and my hands under my shoulders. Push, hover the knees. Stick your butt back, connect your thighs and your chest. One foot to the height of your hip, second foot to the height of the hip, press the butt over the shoulders. Take one leg up, internally rotate it, okay? So that's another way of thinking about squeezing the middle. Because sometimes this leg wants to go out to the side, even though we're not aware of it. We want to try to hug the midline, spinning the big toe mound in and the pinky out. We'll switch the legs when you're ready, and just take a couple breaths and see if you can feel the shape. Think about that idea of compressing thigh to the chest with respect to the leg that's on the wall. Once you've taken a couple breaths there, we'll go ahead and come down. Give your wrists a little bit of love. You might only feel comfortable doing that at, that at this point, and that's totally fine. But if you want to try to hop like I just showed, then we'll hop. And when you're hopping, what I want you to think about is incorporating this idea of internally rotating, right? So I'll take the leg out. I'm gonna spin the pinky, the big toe in, and then I'm gonna plug this femur back and into the socket. So if it appears that my hips are level, let's say, but actually this right hip is more forward than the left. So I'm gonna think about pulling this hip back. And for those of you that aren't new for handstand, if I shorten the distance, internally rotate, connect the thigh and the chest, I'm gonna to lean to the tip of the toe and just plug the femur up and into the socket. So I don't even really need that much momentum if I focus on the compression. But of course, that's easier said than done, okay? So when you're ready, we'll try 10 hops to an L-shaped handstand. We'll position ourselves a leg length again, and that's gonna be scary 
So if you're like, oh my gosh, that's so far away, then take a hand in front and then step back from there. I want to connect my thighs and my chest. I'll take my right leg up and back, internally rotate. Keep this left thigh connected with the chest. Take a hop up. The goal is to try 10 hops when you're ready for 10. Or just hold nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. If you didn't get 10 in, throw a couple more in or just be happy where you're at. We'll try the other side, connecting the thigh and the chest, taking the left leg up, internally rotating it so it's forcing you to squeeze the middle. Shoulders on top of the wrist, lean into it, try to compress thigh to the chest with respect to the leg you're hopping off of for 10. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. We'll come down. Give your wrist a little bit of love. This idea of compressing thigh to the chest, we do this all the time in class. So if you think about these single leg lifts, right? So if I come down to my back and I actively slip my legs away from each other, I'm going to peel my shoulder blades off the ground so I'm ready to take a sucker bunch, creating this shallow C shape. And then I'm just going to compress thigh to my chest. So for this next variation on the L shape, we want to try to cultivate this feeling. So just do a couple of single leg left lifts, compressing thigh to the chest before we try this next one. When you come up, this time the goal is to get the foot to the wall. Because a lot of times people tend to rely on the static point like the wall to try to find the balance, which is great for creating body awareness. But if you want to be able to balance in the middle of the room, then you can't rely on a static point. So this drill is geared towards helping you learn how to compress your thighs to your chest and battling to keep your hips over your shoulders. Because once that leg starts to compress, the hips are going to want to fall if you're not consciously thinking about keeping the hips over the shoulders. So we'll start out with our leg length and we'll go ahead and give you a little bit of a grace period by putting the hands just directly in front of the toes. Connect left thigh in the chest, take the right leg up. I'm going to get my right leg all the way back to that wall. And then from here, I'm going to compress my left side of my chest to find the balance. And you'll notice, you might end up instantly falling. But again, this is a great way of creating body awareness. Can you compress your thigh of your chest? How much compression do you need? And how much momentum do you need? We'll switch out the legs when you're ready. Taking the left leg up, compressing right side of the chest before we even go up. Getting that left foot all the way back to the wall. And then once it's on there, I'm going to push, grip my fingers, and try to compress my thigh to my chest to try to find the balance. And come down. That's a great drill to try a couple of times. It's really challenging, so best of luck with it. I hope you like the video. We'll keep putting out different videos on different styles of hopping handstand. Hopefully, you give them a try and just do the best that you can. It's never about doing everything that you can. Just what you can in the moment.